This is a season of light breaking into darkness. Advent ushers in the season of Christmas, which is the arrival of the light of the world to a people living in darkness. Hanukkah is a Jewish celebration that has notes of light and remembrance with the lighting of candles. Winter solstice is the turning of the tides from dark days to ones that are getting longer and brighter. And because of this, it's a hopeful celebration that plays on themes of light and darkness. This is the season of light breaking into the darkness of the arrival of the light of the world. And so often we equate light to truth or knowledge. It's an easy connection to make. The word carries with it so many uh, connections to illumination and revelation. But today I want to talk about the light breaking in as beauty. If you think about it, uh, Christmas is a time of driving around and looking at Christmas lights. Uh, during the, the height of the COVID uh, pandemic lockdown, I think last Christmas or the Christmas before, we as a family would, you know, pile into the vehicle because there wasn't a lot else to do. And we'd drive around Windsor looking for who had the best Christmas lights. And there's this one house that I swear every single inch of this house with cut was covered with lights and and it was timed and there was a Santa in the window that was made of lights and it was quite the scene uh, to see uh, the the idea of uh, driving around looking for Christmas lights kind of uh, represents this season of looking for light in the midst of darkness of trying to find beauty in the midst of a uh, sort of gloom there's something beautiful and magical about this Christmas story as well and the Christmas season. Hopefully this week has slowed down for you a bit uh, and maybe it's given you an opportunity to break through the hustle and bustle and catch a glimpse of beauty, the beauty of it all. Uh, the Christmas story is one marked with, with beauty, uh, uh, arriving in the mundane and the broken. The contrasts are sharp. Luke's gospel tells us that this baby shows up in the remote and the far off. After he lists all of the powerful players in the story, King Herod of Judea, Caesar Augustus, Quirinius, uh, the governor of Syria, he tells the story of power coming to the margins, to the unknown, to the unimportant people and places of the world. Or consider that the light in the sky shows up to lowly sheep herders and farmers, the uneducated, the working poor, those that tended to stinky and dumb animals. Somehow they are the first to find out, to catch a glimpse of this beauty. Or consider that the most religious of their time didn't see it coming, didn't anticipate where or how it would happen. And instead of showing up to the wisest of Israel, some of the first to bring gifts to Jesus, are the foreigners, those from a different religious system altogether, those from another country. When I think about the arrival of beauty in the midst of brokenness, I, I'm reminded of the times I would walk my downtown alleyway in downtown Windsor uh, quite frequently, actually. It was a, a prayerful, if I was in a prayerful mood, uh, I could just walk and pray in the alleyway. Or as an introvert, uh, I was sure to avoid people in, in the alleyway this way. It was a five minute walk from my house to my office and I would often choose to walk it in the alleyways. I was always confronted with the distinct contrast of brokenness and beauty there. One of my neighbors uh, planted raspberry bushes in the alleyway as a way of infusing beauty in the broken landscape, uh, infusing life and goodness there. Uh, we followed suit and we did the same thing. We planted, planted raspberry bushes and a grapevine as a way of saying uh, there can be beauty, beauty is possible here in this place, uh, telling a different story, if you will. Another neighbor would scatter flower seeds in his alley or, or subversively plant vegetation there as a way of saying, hey, life can grow here too. What if part of the Christmas story isn't just about uh, the truth showing up, knowing the right answers, but the light showing up as beauty. It's like the morning sunrise that paints the skies with strokes of vibrant color. What if the Christmas story is about the author and creator of the world, the one who masterfully created the sun and the moon and the skies, the trees and the plants and the delicious fruit, the animals on the ground and the animals in the water, the animals in the sea. What if this is the story about the painter 
once again coming to infuse our world with light and beauty. I'm reminded of the, the Gangor song, uh, you make beautiful things, you make beautiful things out of the dust. You make beautiful things, you make beautiful things out of us. I love the way C.S. Lewis pens the creation story in the Chronicles of Narnia. It's in uh, book one, The Magician's Nephew. Uh, Narnia is formless. Diggory and Polly show up to bear witness to Aslan, the great lion, singing creation. It's a beautiful and breathtaking scene that always brings tears to my eyes. As the song goes out, creation starts to bubble up and beauty forms right before their eyes. What if the Christmas story is about the one who sung or spoke creation into existence, now showing up to speak and sing a song of beauty and love to a world so desperately in need of it? What if the invitation uh, for, for Christmas is to wake up from our sleepy slumber and pay attention to what God is doing in our midst, to the beauty God wants us to notice, and then look long at it? Sit, steady, stare at it, and then co-create beauty with him. There's a movement from, from waking up and beholding to then joining God in the work of co-creating beauty. In Ephesians 5, the author of Ephesians begins to riff on light, breaking into darkness. And then in verse 14, the author offers us these words. It's a kind of paraphrase of another scripture. Wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. Wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Wake up, get up, pay attention to the light, pay attention to the beauty of Christ shining. In Philippians 4, Paul says this, summing it all up, friends, I'd say you'll do best by filling your minds and meditating on things true, noble, reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious, the best, not the worst, the beautiful, not the ugly, things to praise, not things to curse. Put into practice what you learned from me, what you heard and saw and realized. Do that, and God, who makes everything work together, will work you into his most excellent harmonies. I'd love to push it one step further. Let's move beyond just filling our minds and meditating to filling our lives and co-creating with God what is beautiful and noble and gracious. That, that Ephesians uh, 5 paraphrase seems to be attributed to Isaiah 60, where we're offered this compelling invitation. It says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord shines over you. For look, darkness will cover the earth, and total darkness the peoples, but the Lord will shine over you, and his glory will appear over you. I also love how it reads in the message. The message often adds an, a flair of beauty to what we see in the text. It says, get out of bed, Jerusalem. Wake up. Put your face in the sunlight. God's bright glory has risen for you. The whole earth is wrapped in darkness. All people sunk in deep darkness. But God rises on you. His sunrise, glory breaks over you. If you're the New Year's resolution kind of person, a goals-oriented person, make it a resolution to put your face in the sunlight, to make it a habit of paying attention to the beauty of God's gracious and glorious sunrise breaking over you. Add to your resolutions, look for beauty, pay attention to beauty, co-create beauty with God. If you're not the New Year's resolution type, do all the same stuff. Just don't call it a resolution. Just do it because it will be good for your soul, for your life, and for your walk with God. Again, Christmas is the story of light breaking in and dispelling darkness. It's also the story of light shining brightly, dazzling us with the beautiful story of the incarnation and the beautiful person of Jesus Christ in our midst. And so to you and yours... We wish you a happy new year from the Elevation family. I want to leave you with these words from Ephesians 5, that Ephesians 5 passage again, but this time the beautiful penmanship of Eugene Peterson and the message. He says, don't waste your time on useless work, mere busy work, the barren pursuits of darkness. Expose these things for the sham they are. 
It's a scandal when people waste their lives on things they must do in the darkness where no one will see. Rip the cover off those frauds and see how attractive they look in the light of Christ. And then he ends by saying, wake up from your sleep, climb out of your coffins, and Christ will show you the light. Be blessed, friends.